in talking about sexual health, your education, access to healthcare and resources, along with stigma, affect our well being in profound ways. Sexual health becomes an issue when access to resources is limited. Lack of resources leads to a risk of disease, where one is unable to notice the signs and symptoms to get treated at healthcare services, or may be unable to gain access. Secondly, unplanned pregnancy, where one is being unable to have safe sex and not able to find or afford birth control. Lastly, another cause would be isolation, where one is choosing to abandon physical well-being, having no concerns for their health, and fears of communicating for help. Go. The problems with accessing health care are the fin high financial cost of care, inadequate or no insurance coverage, lack of availability of services, and lack of culturally competent care. Also, there are barriers for newcomers to Canada. Firstly, barrier reflects on the lack of understanding the English language. With newcomers to Canada, some come from different countries and speak another language, but may not be able to understand English. According to a patient named Ms. Brown, states that Canada lacks to provide interpreters. When immigrants do not understand English, they tend to rely on family members to interpret for them. Secondly, lack of understanding of how the healthcare system works in Canada. When one needs to access healthcare in Canada, there is always a requirement to have a health card. OHIP for newcomers is eligible three months after arrival in Ontario. They require various documents and will need to fill up an application that can be retrieved online or at Service Ontario offices. The last barrier that newcomers face is having different expectations with healthcare treatment. Some newcomers believe that Canada will provide various healthcare services that were culturally appropriate. If a healthcare provider is not familiar with an individual's culture, they may not recommend treatment that is not sensitive to traditional beliefs. Others can see that Canada has its own model of care that does not apply to all cultures. Resources are important to sexual health because it can prevent STDs and unplanned pregnancies and also help cure diseases or avoid being diagnosed with other chronic illnesses. Resources for these sexual health problems can be accessed within various healthcare service centers such as medical clinics, pharmacies, and hospitals. Groups like women, teen moms, youth are able to go to a family doctor, hospital, or a clinic for a PAT test, STD test, or abortion counseling referrals. Important resources to sexual health can be places like healthcare centers and community centers, and also people such as parents, a trusted adult, and mainly a doctor. Being able to have communication with a doctor can enable one to have safe sex and prevent STIs and unintended pregnancies. When one chooses to be sexually active, they should consider taking birth control, which come in various forms such as a condom, a pill, a patch, an implant, diaphragm, and an IUD. It's a myth that sex education leads to more and riskier sexual activity and behaviors, like unsafe sex and unplanned pregnancy. Fact, education offers people choice, and more informed choices are better choices. Education is the route to knowledge. Before legalization of abortion, birth control, and contraceptive information, yeah, that's right, legalization, heterosexuality, gender stereotypes, and the church's authoritative role in society was prominent. Due to the controversial nature of sexual instruction and homosexuality, the Ministry of Education avoided implementing a mandatory curriculum until 1987 as a result of the AIDS crisis. The goal of health or family life education curriculum pre-1970s was to preserve family values. It was part of a patriarchal agenda that encouraged girls to be mothers and wives. Through activism and protest, the curriculum became more modern, relevant, and current. The evolution of sexual education begins to show a shift from Christian values and mores to personal choice and overall health and well-being from 1905 to 1970s. Although it is an ongoing struggle to catch up to the curriculum other provinces in Canada provide, the Ontario government attempted to replace the 1998 version first in 2010 and again in 2015. Luckily, many important parts of the 2015 curriculum are now in place in Doug Ford's revised version. The curriculum now has a stronger and earlier emphasis on mental health as it relates to sexual, emotional, and physical health. Education at these age-appropriate developmental stages should help to alleviate the negative body concept and identity issues that many students have experienced in the past, and will encourage society to continue to move forward in terms of acceptance and inclusion of all identities. Parents continue to have the option to opt out of these lessons for their children if so desired. The curriculum is not meant to replace the role parents play in educating their children about sexual health. 
In a review of 83 studies measuring the impact of curriculum-based sexual health education programs, the evidence is strong that some programs increase condom use or contraceptive use. 45% of students in Ontario shared their sexual education did not match up to what they expected to encounter. What is stigma? It is when someone views you in a negative way when you have a distinguishing characteristic or personal trait, though to be or actually is a disadvantage. Discrimination in the healthcare system has a direct negative impact on the health and well-being. Experiences of discrimination are a commonplace with patients noting abusive treatment, stereotyping, lack of quality in the care provided, which discourages indigenous people from accessing care. Education would benefit the LGBTQ community and the indigenous people a lot so others would know and learn more about the facts. In some cases, the lack of consideration for the concerns of the indigenous patients and the LGBT community can result in, if not fatal, consequences. In conclusion, sexual health is part of your overall health, where safe sex and healthy relationships are most important. Education needs to catch up to end stigma and mirror societal mores and technological advances. It should be a more reliable resource, as the gaps and curiosity of youth are fulfilled by the internet. Again, the more informed your choice is, the better it will be.